The officials, Darren George, Craig Murley, and Amy Bonner is assigned by the Valley. And Evansville will have its first opportunity to score. Loyola is going to start it man to man, but they will switch everything on the perimeter, one through five, usually to try and keep the ball in front of them. Here's Phillips, and the left-hander rattles in a three. Preston Phillips, a freshman from Elkhart, Indiana. He makes me look like a genius when the five-man steps outside and hits a three. <laughs> but patience is a key. You said talk, talk, talk. They moved the ball, found an open look, and scored. And there's a takeaway. Butter King stepping in front, and now here's Givens out front with Kuhlman. Newton stepping up. He didn't have a shot. You can see how Loyola is staying home on shooters. Another three ball. This time it's Newton. And in downtown Evansville, it's 6-0 in favor of the Aces. Norris out front with Hudson. Williamson with his hands on the ball. He's guarded by Newton. Uguak is not afraid to shoot from three, but with the ball fake, he got the easy shot. He had the opening in the lane. You don't settle for a jump shot on a road when you're down six early. You want to try and get to the rim. That's a senior play right there by Uguak. And out of the weave, Newton out front. Newton and Gibbons. Newton watched by Braden Norris. Stepping up for the layup, Jawan. Newton. Jawan has five points here in the early going. Eight John. to two aces. John, that's the perfect offense for Evansville. Don't take the shot. You get an easy one in under 10 seconds on the shot clock. Here's Williamson with a step. Lost a handle on the ball, out of bounds, and 18 on the shot clock when the Ramblers play the ball in. You know, one of the things that Drew Valentine talked about in shoot-around today was being ready early and you know they're going to take the best shot from every team they face and you got to be disciplined that's a three ball for Braden Norris Norris shooting 46 percent behind the arc after being down eight to two that's eight to five now Norris hit a couple of big threes in their come from behind win against Valparaiso Here's Phillips. Newton with six on the shot clock. Tried to feed the ball low, and a foul is called. A foul on the Rangers, with his first foul. And a good break for Evansville. It appeared that it was going to be a jump ball or a shot like a clock violation. For a moment, yes, and the clock was winding down. Kuhlman taking the long pass. Givens open at the free throw line. And that's what I love about the Missouri Valley. You get a chance to see guys over a four-year time frame and watch them grow. And Shamar Givens is one of those guys who has grown each and every year. How about that release by Williamson? And Williamson adding the three ball over the last couple of years to his arsenal. He had that shot in mind the moment he caught the ball, and his first field goal is a three. But you're right about Givens. Givens has added an energy to this offense, has added so much. Back when he first came here, was coming off the bench. And that goes out of bounds behind Noah Frederking. And with the turnover, the ball belongs to the Ramblers. And how about Givens? The mid-range game, he's not going to settle, comes off the screen. There's no help. Nice little pull-up so that Ugwa can't get the block. And Williamson, flare screen, three. And with the steal, Noah Frederick. Kuhlman on the elbow, and here's Gibbons. Cut off by Hudson. 19 on the shot clock. Kuhlman from the outside. Yeah. 
They are making those shots look so free and easy, Rich. You know, confidence is, confidence is a fragile thing, and shooters something at Southern Illinois keeping pace with the Panthers. After a foul by Newton just before the timeout, the Ramblers lose the possession, and the loose ball is picked up by Shamar Givens. Looking to add to a 13-8 lead. Evansville, Givens with the behind the back. Kuhlman with Givens on the outside. And the open shot. There's the first miss. Rebound for Braden Norris, who averages two rebounds a game. Shot for three, Williamson. And that's short. And there is Shamar Givens. Newton gets up, makes it back into the front court. 13-8 UE. We're in the first quarter. Evansville seeking its first Missouri Valley win this season and a foul called. And this one is going to go against number 13, Ryan Schweiger, senior from Matthews, North Carolina. He used to play at Princeton. John, there's a lot of fans that would look at this miss by Williamson and say, how could you miss that? But there's nobody within five or ten feet of you. But the pass was low. He caught it below his knee, so you don't catch it clean. You don't get in rhythm. And when you're wide open, you start thinking about it. Caused the miss. Well, the last three he made, the pass was chest high. He went straight up and nailed it. The number two, Blake Sisley. Blake Sisley, that is, S-I-S-L-E-Y, called for the foul for Evansville. The second foul on the Aces. And Loyola gets the ball back down 13-8. Ugwak out. And Tate Hall, graduate student, 6'6", 220 pounds from Greenfield, Indiana. Number 24 in for the Ramblers. Let's see if Loyola takes it advantage of the grad senior night inside. Here's Hall stepping up. Norris had the head and shoulder fake. Great pass and the basket. Chris Knight. You're on your game tonight. Chris Knight, the Dartmouth transfer. One of six Ramblers who are in grad school this year. But he had great movement without the ball and was open. And this is Sisley with the miss that rims off. 13-10 in favor of Evansville. The turnaround, the spin move, and the basket for Knight. Off the bench, four quick points. John, that's a senior veteran going against the freshman from Santa Claus, Indiana. You're saying that was a gift basket? You could say that. Givens, high off the glass and down to Lucas Williamson. Williamson running the floor. Norris setting up at the arc. Back around it goes to the other side. Here's Hall. And a foul. Tate Hall with his first. Chris Knight has been a spark off the bench the last few games and well positioned and does a nice job of taking his time inside just backing him down and there wasn't very much that Blake Sisley could do about those baskets uh, you watch Chris Knight in action and you think back to that final four team that Loyola had when they would bring Andre Jackson off the bench Knight, much like him, athletic, ability to score, guard on the perimeter. Sisley looking to set a pick. Antoine Smith Jr. is in the game now. He's in the corner, and his shot is blocked. And that shot for three goes out of bounds to the Loyola Ramblers. That's 13-12, Evansville. And there's Knight, who's been active on both ends of the floor. He came out of nowhere to block that in the corner. That's what we were talking about. He's the ability to guard inside, but also guard on the perimeter. Ryan Schweiger. Ball. Marquise Kennedy inside. Ball driving, and he's fouled. 
The foul on the ace is number 24, Preston Phillips. John, one of the things that coaches are going to have to do is evaluate talent in the transfer portal. And one of the things that Loyola has done an excellent job of is evaluating players who fit into their system. Milton Doyle, Clayton Custer, Marcus Towns, back-to-back -back players of the year. And now you, you have two transfers from the Ivy League, Ryan Schwieger out of Princeton and, and Chris Knight, who we alluded to a moment ago from Dartmouth. You know, carry on that tradition. So Tate Hall goes one out of two at the free throw line, and he is 12 now out of 15 this season. Rare miss here a moment ago. Tate Hall, another transfer from Division II Indianapolis University. Phillips at the point. Number three is Juwan Newton. Newton steps back. Nice Juwan mark all Newton. net. Seven for Newton in the first half. And Evansville, a 15-13 lead. Evansville playing with a lot of confidence on the offensive end. They're making Loyola play in the half court offensively, not giving them any easy baskets. There's a foul. Kennedy on the drive will be on the free throw line. Antoine Smith Jr. puts him on the free throw line. Marquise Kennedy is one of those guys who feels like he's gotten smaller as the years have gone on. And I think a lot of that is he's gotten wider and stronger and his strength gave him the ability to finish on that one. A three point play. 16-15, first lead for Loyola here in the first half, 12 minutes to go. But a very patient offense so far for the Purple Aces. With Newton and Givens on the outside. Givens backing away, moving in, and his shot's off the back iron. Schwieger with the rebound. All in the front court for Schwieger. And back around it comes. 20 on the shot clock. Kennedy will take the shot. And nothing but white jerseys around the basket with Antoine Smith Jr. Averaging two rebounds a game and getting one there. Evansville has been using up a lot of the shot clock on offensive possessions. Newton off the back iron, and here come the Ramblers. That may have been a little bit quick, but you're absolutely right, John. They're controlling the tempo. Here's Kennedy moving in on Smith, and from the outside, a three ball goes down. Clemens, it's an 11-2 run for Loyola and a 19-15 lead for the Ramblers. Keith Clemens finally healthy. Really played well the last four games, shooting 57% from the floor. Look at the hands and the arms <laughs> move when the ball is not controlled by Evansville. And a bump, no foul called on Kennedy. For the Larry Bird Player of the Year, 43 in one game, a game winner in another. Well, I mentioned during the break that the bench has given Loyola such a big lift. Eight of the last 11 points have come off the bench for Loyola. In the lead of 19-15. You think about guys coming off the bench for Loyola. Three of them are seniors. Tate Hall, Schwieger, Knight. Experienced guys. With time running out on the clock, that's a shot clock violation. No iron on the shot by Kuhlman. And here are the Ramblers looking to add to a 19-15 lead with 10 minutes to go until halftime. Drew Valentine taking over as the head coach, going 13-2. A coach at Oakland University and Michigan State as an assistant before going to the Rambler program, and then he's the head man this year. They're off to a great start. They're best in years. Kennedy stepping up. And a blocking foul called. Frederick King looked like he was set. But he may have been in, inside the block charge arc. Let's take another look at it. And that angle, he definitely wasn't set. I can't believe I'm going to say this, but the official made a good call on that. And Loyola with the ball. Williamson. Tried to feed inside, and that went off Frederick King. 
Ten seconds on the shot clock for Loyola. Newton back in for Evansville, and Givens will take a break. Plays Bochamp. 13 is in the game for Evansville. And Loyola plays it in from the end line. Here's Kennedy stepping up, and he is meeting some resistance. And a foul call. That's on Phillips, and Preston foul. Phillips. His second foul. Loyola is a team that has made more free throws in conference than their opponent has attempted. And you can see you know, they'll shoot the three, but they won't just settle for it. You got a guy like Kennedy who can split the defense, draw the foul. Isn't that what you find with most of the really good teams, the teams that are in contention for the title at the end of the year, that they are more, making more free throws and getting to the line more? Well, they understand that you must push the defense back on their heels to open up your perimeter jump shot. Newton working on Kennedy, and that's Kuhlman. Oh, a near steal there by Tate Hall. Bochamp driving, looking for the outside pass. Two on the shot clock. And that's off the back iron as Newton just had to throw the ball up. And we have a foul. That's against Phillips. Preston Phillips, third foul. Seventh team foul on Evansville. Phillips and Kennedy got tangled up on the defensive rebound and continued to stay tangled up all the way through, through into the front court. Kennedy gets the worst of it, but he'll go to the line. Kennedy, two out of three from the line, four points so far in the first half. One more here after making the front end of a one and one. And this one's in play at 8.58 to go until halftime. 21-15, Loyola. Tack on one more. Six for Kennedy in the first half. He averages 8.5 a game. Another trait of the really good teams, Rich, being able to hang into games where you're not shooting the ball well, but you defend very well to keep yourself in the game. And that is what Loyola has done, and their ability to guard on the perimeter has been outstanding. No, oh, what a great Fred pass. Kuhlman. That was some pass. And on the other end, the ball belongs to Kuhlman and Evansville. They were able to score off a great touch pass, and Newton was poked in the eye. Let's take a look at that last basket for a UE. And Kuhlman sees that Frederick is open on rotation, doesn't hesitate, throws it to his teammate, and future workmate. How about this one, John? Both Evan Kuhlman and Noah Frederick King will graduate this year and move on. They both have jobs in Cincinnati for Fifth Third Bank. So teammates will become workmates next year. And they have a head start of being teammates right here on the basketball court at UE. Oh, nice reach in and a steal by Givens. Givens is still trying to get his vision lined up. Pullman giving it up to Givens, who drives, draws the contact, and scores. Used his body to create some space. A two-point lead now for Loyola. Uguak setting the pick, taking the pass, but couldn't close it out. Couldn't convert. Brother King clearing the ball out to Givens. 7.20 and counting in the first half. And if you're Todd Licklider, you're loving the pace right now. Kuhlman directing traffic. Bochamp on the outside. Norris is staying with him. Long three and that's short. The ball was simply tipped in by Schwieger. 
Norris Kennedy on the outside with Williamson. Swigger with the give for Bill after the timeout. Noah Frederking will inbound to Shamar Givens. Kuhlman, Bochamp, and Newton are on the floor now for the Ramblers. Givens dropping it low for the baseline and with the reverse. Newton has nine in the first half. A 7-0 Evansville run, tying the game at 22. Terrific job of relocation movement without the basketball. Of paramount importance for Evansville. And the drop low for the dunk. Uguak has four in the first half. That didn't take long for Loyola to answer. Coming down to six minutes until halftime. Kuhlman, Frederick King on the outside, and Givens guarded by St. Thomas, number zero. And Thomas reaches in, first foul on Thomas. How about the last ball screen? Williams, Williamson pulls the defender. He knows he has the mismatch with Uguak guarded by a smaller Newton. The strong finish. One more loyal a foul, and Evansville will be in the one and one. Two point lead for the Ramblers. Frederick King, guarded closely by Williamson. Newton stepping back, high arc, and that's short. Here's Norris, redshirt junior from Hilliard, Ohio. Schweiger from the point. St. Thomas way off to the right. And another chance to tie or take the lead here for Evansville. Uguak right there with Kuhlman. Givens a long three. A her. Uguak, graduate student from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Came to the Loyola program from New Mexico. Evansville. Got to try and keep him out of the inside. But Loyola needs to try and pound it inside to Uguak when they have a mismatch. They've been able to shoot the ball at the highest clip that they did last year. Tonight, they came out firing. Evansville down by two. Off the weave out front, Givens and Kuhlman. Evan Kuhlman, fifth year senior in the lineup for the Aces, and Givens with five on the shot clock. Too strong. Uguak is there for the Ramblers. And another possession where Loyola will have to walk the ball up. Good job in conversion by Evansville. Norris at the point. Givens is with him. And we have a Sox. Lucas Williamson threw out the first pitch for the White Sox this year, or this past year, I should say. Drew Valentine threw it out for the Cubs. I wonder who. It sounds like a good pitching duel. I know. I wonder who won that game. matchup. I heard it was a strike, though, on the south side. <laughs> Newton on the outside here for Evansville. 26 22. Loyola with the lead, Evansville with the ball inside four minutes to go until halftime. Nothing in the corner there for Newton. Five on the shot clock, out of bounds, and the ball goes to Loyola. Evansville has ten points off six Loyola turnovers, keeping Evansville in the game down by a 26-22 count right now. A rare turnover for Evansville, only their fifth of the game. Givens needs just get that up on the rim. His big guy was going for the rebound. Williamson, a collision. And Williamson is called for the foul, his first. Stay tuned for our halftime report, sponsored by our friends at State Farm Insurance, a proud sponsor, a partner, that is, of the Missouri Valley Conference for surprisingly great rates, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. We'll go over the recap and our stats. Have our Arch Madness profile tonight. That's Evansville's Shamar Givens.
coming up on our State Farm halftime report. John, terrific job by Evansville of taking that charge. Often you see a player feel the pressure and they don't fall down, but on that one, he fell down and slid. Givens inside. He was cut off by Uguak. Newton blocked. Actually, Chris Knight was the man who was doing all the maneuvering in the lane and comes up with his second block shot of the night. Well, first he guards Givens, keeps him out, and then comes over from help side. Perfect timing for the young man from Madison, Wisconsin. Four on the shot clock. Givens letting it fly just grazed the rim down to Tate Hall. Williamson, that's off. Newton with the rebound. He averages six rebounds a game. Plays much bigger than his size. And again, they don't rush. Nothing in transition. Back it out. Run your offense. Gage Bulb, number zero in the game for Evansville. Ten on the shot clock. Coming down to two minutes left in the first half. Going back door. We have a foul, a grab. As Newton was looking to get free. One and one coming up here for the Aces. You know, that was a set play all along. Kuhlman flashes to that high post. Definite back door on an overplay. Well, Evansville is looking to break a four minute drought. With Newton on the line. Newton, a 78% free throw shooter, and he has nine points so far in tonight's game. He gets a bonus. You know, I asked Newton before the game, who's an El Paso native, was he upset that the Cowboys lost? He said, no, nah, heck no, I'm a, I'm a Packers fan. I said, how can you be a Packers fan living in Texas? He said, oh, my cousin, Aaron Jones, plays for the Packers. I said, okay. That's how. Keep, keep cheering for the Packers. We have a two-point ball game in favor of Loyola. Loyola with the ball. Norris. Kennedy and Williamson. Williamson spinning into the lane, drops the pass low, high off the glass, and a foul. Kennedy will go to the line. Kuhlman with his second foul. I'd like to take another look at that, but I think they got it right because at the very beginning, Kuhlman's hand comes down and makes contact. And watch him as he rotates over. Another good backdoor cut. You see his, it's tempted. He reaches in with that left hand. Another good call by the official. Sisley, number two, back in with Kuhlman going to the bench. Kennedy on the free throw line. That's a 27-24 lead for Loyola. If you're Evansville, you know, you want to make this about a three, maybe four possession game here in the last two minutes. Try and get into the locker room as close as you can. Newton, what quickness into the lane, but then it goes out of bounds off Givens. So the Aces turn it over again. Loyola is so good guarding the basketball. They move their feet. They don't reach. Keep the ball in front. Long outside shot. All net, Williamson. Now a six-point lead for Loyola and a loose ball. Somehow Givens was able to keep the possession alive. Now spinning into the lane, the finger roll short. What a move to get there, but couldn't convert. Williamson stopping, popping, and he's off the mark. Givens, he's going to slow the pace as the throw comes to the front court for Jawan Newton. Don't want to get in that running match with Loyola. Take some time off the clock. See if you can't set up something for Frederick. Sisley. Looking for Bob. Five on the shot clock. Newton.
spinning off to Tate Hall, number 24 for Loyola. Inside 20 seconds to go in the first half, and youngest coach since Todd Bozeman of Cowell to have his team ranked in the AP top 25, coming in at number 22 this week. Cal had a pretty good player by the name of Jason Kidd back then. Five seconds. Schweiger with two seconds. The turnaround and short. And two three-point field goals. Seven for Marquise Kennedy. But what a good job by the bench with Keith Clemens scoring five, four for Chris Knight. Helping Loyola to a six-point halftime lead. Loyola with the ball. And there's a dunk and a foul. As Hudson scores his first field goal, he'll have a chance for a three-point play designed right out of the locker room here in the second half. John, good coaches think alike. Go inside. That's what we talked about. Set play, the back screen, and Hudson with the flush. But he couldn't get the three-point play. 56% free throw shooter. And a 32-24 lead for Loyola. Let's see what Evansville has in mind coming out of the locker room. Givens, and he's fouled. Second foul on Braden Norris. The foul the Ramblers, number four, Braden Norris. Just getting started with the second half, 20 up on the shot clock as the Aces will play it in. Newton was at the end line, and... They're going to place number 30, Noah Frederking, as the trigger man. 30 is Ugwak. She's watching Givens. Phillips, number 24. Nine on the shot clock. Norris is with Newton. Hudson off the switch. And with the foul, this is on Evansville's Juwan Newton is second. Newton got caught in the air. Nowhere to go. You know, you talk about it all the time as a coach. Don't leave your feet on the pass. Newton did, and he paid for it with a foul. On the other end of the floor now, Loyola on the attack. Here's Norris. Somebody's open, and that was Hudson, a reach in by Kuhlman. And Kuhlman has three fouls. The foul on the Aces of Frederick. Oh, make that Frederick. He has three fouls. So two on Kuhlman. I don't know that. I'm going to let you go, John. Hudson on the line here as we talk about Arch Madness. Tips off March 3rd through the 6th, and the only place to celebrate before and after all the action at Enterprise Center is the MVC Fan Hangout at Ballpark Village. For all you need to know about the Fan Hangout downtown at the Arch, it's Arch Madness. The Arch Madness app, you can download that right now. One for two here for Hudson. John, what I was about to say is first two possessions, they start big, Loyola does, and they go right inside. Just leaning at the end line, Phillips. And Hudson fouled him. Phillips gave the Purple Aces some good minutes in the first half until he got into foul trouble. Newton scored 11 in the first half. This is Givens drawing the double team. And left Phillips open just for a moment. Seven on the shot clock. Kuhlman, too hard off the glass, follows his shot, and can't score it. There's Williamson. Williamson averages five rebounds a game. Oh, quick move into the lane, tried to dump it low, and the ball's kicked. Nice reaction by Preston Phillips, who hit the deck. Williamson trying to jump, dump it off to Hudson inside. You know, a lot of people look at that and say, oh, he's trying to make the unselfish play. But sometimes the unselfish play is just get the ball up on the rim because your post guy is trying to carve out offensive rebound position. Here's Ugwa. 12 on the shot clock. 
Kuhlman trying the steal. The bounce low, and the shot is short inside for Kennedy. Fredder King in the front court. Over eight minutes without a field goal for Evansville. Now this is an important possession offensively to try and keep contact so you can control the tempo. Fredder King. Fredder King. He has two three-point field goals, one on each half. Kuhlman with the nice assist, the skip pass. And back to a six-point ball game. Norris for Kennedy at the point. Here's Norris spinning. He had an opening. With Newton hitting the deck, Norris scores his first two-point field goal as five. Givens against Kennedy. Off the glass and in. <laughs> Givens was not to be denied. A little bulldog. He has six points. Norris was bumped by Givens. The first foul on Givens. Well, you said Evansville had to have a basket, and here's how they got their last three pointer. Uh, when the defense over helps, it becomes a long run, and Frederick King made him pay, and then Norris under control inside. 23 on the shot clock. Hudson on the handoff for Norris. Saved by Kennedy. Ten on the shot clock. And all the way in, Uguak. He has six. John, every offensive possessions for, for Loyola this half the ball has went in the paint. Obviously a point of emphasis in the halftime discussion by Drew Valentine. Don't settle for threes. Take advantage of our size. 24 is Preston Phillips. He's playing with three fouls. Newton dropping it, uh, or Newton with the pass from Gibbons. And a shot clock violation gives the ball back to Loyola with a 37-29 lead. There's a lot of bodies on the floor at both ends. And that's Jawan Newton. Let's take another look at it. He just got tangled up as they came down. Jawan Newton back on his feet. No foul there. I think that was pretty clean, actually. I was talking about the shot. <laughs> the fall that just happened with Uguak on the floor. But Newton is back on his feet, back on defense now for Evansville. Williamson, quick release. Williamson has three three-point field goals. And you push the defense back on their heels by pounding it inside. And it ends up with a wide open three for Williamson. Vegas lead at 40 29 now. The Ramblers back on defense. Givens with the ball out front, 12 on the shot clock. Givens is fouled. Six feet, 180 pounds, and a terrific outside shot. And there's a reach in on Knight, his third foul. Now let's look at this last possession. A lot of coaches call this doubling the ball screen or icing the ball screen. And we're frozen in time. It was really iced. It was really iced. As we look at the good hustle play. High arc and the shot is short for Givens. Loyola back the other way. Coming down to 15 minutes left in the game and a 40 to 29 lead. And here is Norris, who averages 9.9 .9 a game. He has five tonight. Williamson 
Bullet pass inside. The turnaround shot is short for Knight. Evansville needs a basket on this trip. There's Phillips at the point. Fredder King was blocked on the outside, but Newton drives and can't score. He'll have a chance to score from the free throw line. And the foul is on Williamson is second. John, that was an unbelievable block by Knight. He's helping He's on the lob pass, tonight. and he gets to Fredder King. That is just, you know, a lot of times players will turn and they'll stop. Don't give up on the play. Knight, he tipped the great ball right job there. of hustling. Another free throw coming up here for Newton, who's three for three from the line in his 12 points. But all that space for Fredder King, and somehow Knight got his fingertips on the ball. Yeah, there's so many plays that happen during the game where a guy will either quit on a play because they don't think they can get there or they can't help on a, on a layup. But the guys who finish off plays and get there like Knight just did, that's why you win games. Norris with the ball fake. Lobbing low. And that play was broken up inside by Phillips. <laughs> 13 on the shot clock. Loyola to play it in. Clemens, Hall, a three-pointer, four for Hall. Baseline out of bounds play, secondary baseline out of bounds play. Hall, oh, nice job of spotting up, moving without the basketball. And Loyola creating some space between the Ramblers and the Aces at 43-31. Has been held to six points tonight. And the steal by Norris. Two-hand pass for the corner. A three for Williamson. 12 points on four three-point field goals. He averages 12-3 a game. And the 11-2 run now for the Ramblers. And John, when you start to get some space, like Loyola has created, that three-point shot becomes a little bit easier. Phillips off the glass. And there's Tate Hall. This is Loyola running the floor. Norris faking the outside shot. Hall stepping into the lane, off the glass. Over the rainbow and down to Evan Kuhlman. And we have an I team, but... My favorite might be Illinois State, Missouri State, the top two scorers in the conference. Antonio Reeves and Isaiah Mosley. Bochamp with the miss and the rebound by Ryan Schweiger of Loyola. Loyola leading 46-31 with the ball. Under 12 and a half to go in the second half as the Ramblers are looking for their 10th consecutive win. And Loyola very workmanlike here in the second half. Oh, Schweiger and the putback by Tom Welch, his first field goal. Attack the paint, put the defense back on their heels. No turnovers for Loyola here in the second half. Like Sisley, that is, got his hand on the ball, but Welch was able to get a put back to give Loyola a 48-31 lead. Bochamp with the one-hander and off the back iron. Tate Hall with a rebound and Norris in the front court. Clemens kept the foot down <laughs> somehow and scores a three ball. Keith Clemens with his second three-point field goal. He has eight points. John, it used to be if it looked weird to the official, they would automatically call the travel, but the times have changed. It may look strange, but they don't blow the whistle. Frederick King with a three. Frederick King with nine points. 11 minutes to go in the second half with Loyola, a comfortable 51-34 lead. Hall with the ball into the lane. And a 
Make so is she. To join us for Arch Madness in St. Louis. Uh, the biggest family reunion in the Midwest in March. Here's Kennedy and an offensive foul. Used the elbow. First foul on Marquise Kennedy, the junior, and a brother of Rice in Chicago. A terrific job of Juwan Newton keeping him in front, feeling the pressure, hitting the deck. 13 is Blaze Beauchamp, sophomore from Minnetonka, Minnesota. Newton. This is Kuhlman. And the shot goes down for Frederick. Give him 11. He ran that set play for Frederick out of the timeout. Know that he's the hot man. Hasn't missed tonight. Schwager all the way in short. Off Frederick King's hands over to Kuhlman. And now Bochamp in the front court. Bochamp. He's blocked inside. Welch got a hand on that. And Bochamp brings it out with 10 on the shot clock. Long three. And the rebound for Ahur Uguak. Uguak with the spin, lost the ball, and a foul called on Sisley. His second foul. Uguak may have gotten bailed out on that one. Uguak will go to the free throw line. The foul was on Kuhlman. That's his fourth personal. John Uguak is another one of those transfers that has paid dividends. Transfer started his career at New Mexico. We've been talking with Drew Valentine before the game. One of the things that carried over from Porter Moser is a big point of emphasis for this Loyola team is player development and getting players better each and every year. And Uguak is a prime example of that. Came in as a driver, low post scorer, now a capable three-point shooter. Uguak gives Loyola 53-36 advantage. And that's off the glass and no good for Shamar Givens, who has scored only six tonight. Braden Norris in the front court. Williamson, close to his season average with 12 points. Good catch and a good hook shot. Knight has six. I love the movement by Loyola on the offensive end. This is a much different offense for Loyola than it has been the last four years when they played through the center, Cameron Crutwick. And that shot goes down for Shamar Gibbons. Gibbons. Yep. Another and he has nine points. Crudwick was the conductor out there. He, he was. directed so much traffic. They all listened to him, followed his lead. Was the, and that was from the very first time he stepped on campus. He was the maestro. His great nice. Norris. Drops a nice pass into Chris Knight. Knight has eight. But the first time we got a chance to see Krubwig was in the opener in the Valley down in Springfield his freshman year. And after watching that game, we're thinking, wow, there's a great candidate for freshman of the year, if not the Bird Trophy in his freshman season. A terrific leader now playing over in Belgium professionally. Sisley with the miss, and here's Marquise Kennedy to the front court, slowing the pace. Under eight minutes to go in the game here in Evansville. And John, speaking of Crudwig, if you haven't heard it, you got to take a listen to a podcast that he and former teammate Will Alcock. Oh, what about that wraparound pass? Oh, beautiful, beautiful pass by night. And 10. And the podcast is called Bears, Blurs, and Belgium. He's a big Bears fan that Crutwig is. But they have special guest Barry Hinton, a former coach at SIU. Missouri State has been on there, but it, 
It's a, it's a lot of laughs. So if you haven't had a chance, check out their podcast. Oh, champ! His first field goal. Well, you know that's entertaining. <laughs> have you checked it out? It, I have, and especially the episode with Barry Hinson, one of the all-time best, maybe one of the funniest coaches ever to walk the sideline. Here's Williamson, high arc, count it. He has 15 all on three-point field goals, bettering his 12.3 points a game average. This is such an unselfish team, always looking for the open man, create the easy shot. And the steal by Kennedy. Kennedy running the floor all the way in, and the miss. Frederick King with a rebound. As Knight tried to take it away from him, but here come the aces. Down to 6.20 left in the second half. Phillips giving it up to Shamar Givens. Givens looking for some kind of space, takes the long shot, and it drops Shamar in. Givens. 12 for Givens. Well, Indiana. Back to back games. Last year we saw. Because of COVID, teams would go to one site and play two nights in a row. This one a little bit different. Friday, Evansville will go to Illinois State, and then Sunday they come right back. Easy scouting for the staff of both teams. 17 on the shot clock, and great ball movement here by the Ramblers. And we have a whistle, and it's going to go the other way. But how about the Valley and the efficiency of rescheduling games and getting the schedule in? The only conference in the country to play all of its league games last year. Uh, just a true testament to the league office. Jack Watkins doing an excellent job of rescheduling things and not quite as many postponements this year. A little bit easier, perhaps, but still not very easy when you have a plan and you have to readjust it. And finding openings at facilities. Here's a block inside. Who else? Number 23, Chris Knight. Man, he just does such an excellent job of moving his feet, never reaching. Ubach feeding low, and Knight scores. Ubach gets the assist. Knight has 12 points off the bench, averaging 7.7 .7 a game coming in. And we have a whistle over along the sideline. Uh, the transfer from Dartmouth. Doing it on both ends. Keeps the ball in front, makes the block. He's going to run the floor. Roll to the rim. Nice finish. And a total of 12 points in this one. Evans fell with the ball. 16 on the shot clock. And the long feed comes out front. And Aruna, Ian and Aruna, senior from the Netherlands in the game now. 34 is Antoine Smith, Jr. And John, you think about Chris Knight. He could start for just about every team in this conference, but he's willing to come off the bench, sacrifice for his team. He's doing an excellent job of starring at that role. Boy, he has looked great tonight. The block on... Frutter King shot where it looked like he had so much space. How do you get fingertips on that? And I found a way. You know, it's so hard for a coach to convince guys that it's not who starts the game, it's who finishes. And what's the best lineup that you can have? And when you got unselfish players, it makes a coach's job that much easier. And there's two seniors who transferred from the Ivy League, Schweiger and, and Knight fit right into the Loyola culture. One and one here for Braden Norris. Third foul for Newton. Puts Norris on the line and he'll get a bonus. Norris 21 out of 25 from the foul line. And Norris had a good outing in the last game against Evansville at 19. And he'll get home, check the scores, see how his brother is playing over at Wright State. Didn't get a chance to ask him before the game who wins that one-on-one -on -one contest. Well, you know the answer. <laughs> of course, the older brother. 
Bochamp out front. And Aruna. Into the lane, the spin on Hudson. The one hand shot. Either on a post pass or a dribble drive and scored and consequently then created open opportunities at the three point line. Another free throw coming up here for Ian and Aruna. But every possession was like clockwork, very precise. And that's when Loyola began to pull away in this one, leading 66 to 46. When we talk about their unselfishness, 22 field goals on 14 assists. They average over 16 assists per game. And right on that number, three and a half to go. Here's Hall driving. Schweiger moves it around, and here's Norris with 10 on the shot clock. Nothing inside. A three ball from out front by Hall. He has two of those in the second half. Seven total points tonight. Three minutes to go in the game. 69-46 Loyola on the way to a 10th consecutive victory. Looking for win number five in the conference this year and a 14-2 overall record. And Aruna tried the reverse and couldn't draw iron. St. Thomas needed a little help there and that's provided by Norris. Good hands by Norris to save that possession. Hudson, he's going to put it up and off the glass. Five for Jacob Hudson, all in the second half. 215 and counting in the game. Emmett Page in the game. He's number 11. Bochamp looking for a little space. Eight on the shot clock. Inside two minutes to go. And a foul as Gage Bobe was looking to create something. Third foul on Norris. And we have one and one here. John, you look at that last defensive possession on the foul. All five... Loyola guys are down in a defensive stance. You, you're up over 20, yet everybody is locked in. And, you know, we talk about it all the time, the two tests that you face during the course of a game, the test of adversity and the test of success. How do you handle it determines whether you win or lose. And Loyola handling the test of success. They're staying unselfish on the offensive end, staying locked in on the defensive end. Welch with the ball on the outside. And the shot goes for Schweiger. That's his first field goal. A minute 23 and counting. Rich, how does a team learn to win? No, it starts with culture. It starts with, you know, holding guys accountable. And Drew Valentine talked about that at shoot around today and, and really being disciplined. And discipline means, you know, taking good shots. It means not overreacting on the defensive end, staying home, staying on your feet. I mean, you put and those St. Thomas with the roll. You put those little things together and it creates opportunities for success. I asked the great law, uh, coach at uh, Chicago with the DePaul program, Ray Meyer, what makes a great coach? He said, great players. Great players. <laughs> and he had some great players there, too. I always. Job, Ray did. Uh, I always told my assistants, hey, I need better players. I'm not that good of a coach. And that shot off the glass for Alcock. Oh, no. Now, somewhere in Belgium. Cameron Crutwig is smiling and cheering, toasting his podcast partner. And we have a whistle of a foul. 77 to 48. Just running out the clock. Johnson in the game. 